Believers Faith Fellowship, aka BFF, and you are in for a treat. We have an hour and 15 minute worship service. My name is Trisha, by the way. If you are here visiting for the first time, we'd love to connect with you. There's a link popping up right below down here. Go ahead and connect with us. We'd love to buy you a coffee if you're a first time visitor. If you are not a first time visitor and you're a member of the church or you just swing by our services regularly, go ahead and invite somebody to service. There is a word from God and they are going to want to receive it. I'll catch you right after. For you, let your spirit move as we shout your praise from our hearts to your ears. All the glory is yours now, forevermore. Here, I worship all we can give it for you because we're here for you. Yes, we are for you. Come on, sing it out. and you're ready for the ball to come, right? So 
are we expected this morning for the Lord to move in a beautiful way? If you're ready for a move of God, get ready. Be expected. Don't just stand here and wait. Be ready to catch what the Lord wants to give you this morning. Just receive it. Come on, we say this. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, from a touch from you. If you don't come, no, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. Take it up, take it up, take it up, yeah. is looking for a people that just aren't in control. He's looking for a people of surrendered hearts. It's all about surrender. You know, you can always have a calling. The question is, you have the choice to step into it or not. I said you have the choice to step into it or not. God wants to do something so beautiful this morning in your heart. Maybe it's hardened. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're trying to know Jesus. Maybe you're so filled, but he wants to 
fill you even more. There's all kinds of cons this morning. Amen, church? Come on, believe with me. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. Hey, they haven't seen what you can do.
wants you to ask him. He wants you to ask him. Ask him. Talk to God this morning. You're here for a reason this morning. Don't cancel it out. We're believing, we're believing, we're believing, we're believing, we're believing, we're believing. Come on. You've been praying that prayer for so long. I want you to pray for it one more time. One more time. Don't give up. He don't give up on you. You don't give up on him. Come on. Come on. God, we believe. Sing this out for yourself. Want a hug and still keep saying, 
I believe it is done. Matter of fact, look at them and say, do you believe that it is done? thank you that this morning it is done everything that we need everything that we desire everything that we hope for it is done but father you're challenging us to find it in your word to find it in you and live it and walk it out and become Father, you're challenging us to step up, to rise up, to move up, to get up, and to do what you called us to do. Father, the time is getting short, but your hand is still able. Your ear is still open, and you're able to do in us, through us, and with us all good things father we are your people speak to us this morning open the eyes of our understanding that we would see know and uh, and grasp with fullness the beauty and wonder of what you have made available to us through your son we give you thanks and we give you praise in the name of your precious wonderful son jesus Amen. amen amen And amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of y'all might not know me. I'm Steph Ron. I I go to the first service, and I try to sit back there and take my little four square feet of space and turn it over for God all the time. So if I get a little bit excited, don't let it bother you. I'm just a guy that just wants to have a good time with the Lord. I will be 60 at my next birthday. And... (laughs) And I feel more alive and more on fire for God than now than I ever have in my life. I'm in pretty good shape for a six-year-old too, ain't I? No, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding. But praise God, Pastor Jason has been doing a series on good works. And he has asked me to take this one. He and I got to interact over this past week about this message. And I tell you what, um, I am not a technologically savvy guy. I I just don't even mess with it. And when he tells me we have to have a PowerPoint, I'm like, power who point? Uh, (laughs) If God didn't get behind my point, it ain't going to have no power. But he will take my outlines and he'll structure them where they work. And so I sent him some stuff on Wednesday, and, and I usually hear right back from him. And I didn't hear from him, and it was Friday, and I was getting a little nervous because I was like, maybe he didn't like it. You're going to tell me, I don't want you to speak, brother, because you didn't get this one right. But when I finally interacted with him, he said, man, I sit and I went over this. And when he said the outline to me, tears came to my eyes because I saw how he laid it out and what he saw that I saw that there are people that God is looking to do something so wonderful through. And guess what? We qualify. We are the ones. And any time, I've been in the Lord for over 35 years. Any time God sends a message to a people that pricks the heart of the angel, the star of the church, then the people are ready to move where it needs to go. But it's up to us to take it and run with it. Is that okay? So this morning, I'm going to take my time and unpack this. We're going to unfold it together because it's not important that you just hear a good word and walk out the door. It's important that you get this, move with this, 
walk in this and become this. Amen. Good works, the key to conquering in life. Now, before I came into the Lord, I grew up a nice little fun Presbyterian. And when I did good works, it was because I had done done bad before that. <laughs> and I was trying to make up for the bad I done done. Now, y'all know, y'all done got drunk on a, on a Friday night or a Saturday night, and Sunday morning you're in church trying to say, Lord, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Just get, Lord, get me over to Jesus. Woo! Now, some of y'all might have did that last night. We forgive you, because y'all the ones that do the other thing I used to do. I used to try to do the good things help an old lady cross the street or something when I knew I had done messed up and trying to get pinned. So, God, if you won't smoke me on this one, this is what I'll do for you. But those are not the essence of what God is looking for in good works. It's not for us to shine a light really on us, but it's to bring glory to God. And we have to get to a point where this is what came to me. Okay. I get it. We're supposed to do good work. I get it. We are created for good works. I get it. Good works glorify God. I get it that we are to be a model and an example of good work. But what are they? How do I know when I've hit the right one? How do I know when I've landed in the right place that God and heaven says, yeah, buddy, that's it? I need to know that because as I walk through my life, I don't want to experiment with the things God has given me to do. I don't, like I said, I'm, to, I'm about to turn 60. I don't have time to waste. I don't want to figure out five years from now, oh, that wasn't it. I want to get it right now. And let me tell you, we do not have to miss God's plan on anything in our life. That is a lie from the pit of hell. God wants to make sure we are walking right where he wants us to walk. So here we go. Today, I'm going to show you what a good work is and how it overcomes the kingdom of darkness. And I'm here to tell you that the kingdom of darkness is real and it's after you, but it has no power for those that know their God. Amen. All right, here we go. So here, here, here's the thing I want to deal with. First of all, good works are and everyone, everyone assignment. Amen? Is that okay? Yeah, I'm just looking just to make sure y'all got that. Now, say, look at your name and say, neighbor. Good works are your assignment. I just want to make sure you knew. <laughs> Number two, good works restore hope to and in humanity. How many of you have been shocked lately? Somebody did something good to you and you're like, you're looking for them to take advantage of. You're looking for them to do something to you, aren't you? You want, oh, if you treat me, oh, you smile, you say hello. When you have a good thing done to you, it opens up something in you. And doesn't it make you want to do good to somebody else too? When have you paid for the meal for somebody behind you in the drive through line? When have you sat next to someone and you see them sitting there at a restaurant and you can tell the husband and wife are not getting along with each other and nothing ain't going good. They eating the food together, but there ain't no communion there. It's just not working good. Why don't you buy their meal and leave before, you, before they see it so you can bless them? And maybe that will turn their night. Come on. It restores hope to and in humanity. Now, this next one, y'all, I'm proud of it. I came up with it. So, y'all, <laughs> look at this. Good works make us a neon sign revealing and pointing others to God. Wow. Y'all can say wow. 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 Yeah, no, I don't, I don't. That was pretty doggone good. Shoot. 
Every now and then I get one. <laughs> All right. Also, good works are pregnant with promise, purpose, potential, and your provision. Now watch this. Watch this. Innate in that statement is this. If you're not doing good works, you might miss your promises. You might miss your purpose. Ooh. Your potential and that provision you've been looking for, that good work you didn't do, it had it captured in it. Wow. That's what 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you have an all sufficiency in all things might abound unto every good work. He gives you everything to enjoy. He gives you everything to increase you and cause you to, to do good, but it's out of those good works. All right, so let's look at this introduction. I want to, want to talk to you about what heaven says about good works. I'm going to give you three scriptures, then I'm going to summarize them and, and bring out some points in them because I think they're truly necessary for us to see. Oh, I got to teach you like I did the first service. Now, if I start reading a scripture, it's up on the screen. Everybody can see it. If I get to a certain point as I'm reading and I stop, the next little phrase I want you to say out loud. Is that cool? So, so y'all got it? Y'all got it? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Truly, truly, I say unto you, whoever believes in me will do also the works that I do and... Man, y'all didn't even just stop at a phrase. Y'all just went ahead and went for it. That's what I'm talking about. Show some initiative. Show some giddy up and go. That's right. Look, greater works, greater works than Jesus did. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so let me do the other two scriptures. Then I'm going to come back and grab this, okay? The next one. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, he went about. Jesus just defined for you what good works are. The Bible just laid out for you, clear as a bell, what good works are. Look at um, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8b. For this reason, for this reason, the Son of God appeared and was... To the re I'm sorry. The reason the Son of God appeared was to... Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 says, we are to be imitators of Christ. If Christ came to destroy the works of the devil and we imitate him, what does that make us? You wonder why you're here. Let me, let me give you a clue. You're here to destroy the works of the devil. Oh, my God. Look, if you stop working with the devil and start destroying his works, maybe that... I didn't say that out loud, did I? I didn't. Ooh, ooh, that was a slip. I didn't mean to say that. We have sent to destroy the works of the devil. Do you know who you are? You have been anointed by God with the Holy Spirit and with power to go about in your neighborhood to go about in your school, to go about on your job and destroy the works of the devil. But the first place they have to be destroyed is in us. All right, let's break this down. Come on, brothers. Good works, according to these scriptures. This is not according to Stephon, according to these scriptures. Good works are doing what Jesus did and... I, I like that. Good works are doing what Jesus did and? Greater. I love that. You're moving to something greater. Good works are destroying the works of the devil. Now, how? This, 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 this is, I'm like, God, you got to be kidding me. Jesus was a bad boy. Jesus operated and did some stuff that's just unbeknownst. Amazing. So in Pastor Jason and I's dialogue, he says, Stephan, I need you to take time 
to explain how it is Jesus could make the statement, greater works. What does that look like? I don't know. Why y'all looking at me? I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Listen to this. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus was sent to the lost tribe of the children of Israel. And Jesus, they brought the sick to him, and he healed them. They brought him, they brought him to his house. At one point, they tore the roof off of his house to get somebody to him. So the way Jesus got people healed is they came to him. But then he said this in the 16th chapter of John. He told the disciples, it's expedient for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit can't come. But when he comes, he will come and he'll make his abode with you and he'll live inside of you. Then he says, this is what, when we get to the um, Acts chapter 5, verse 16, remember Jesus had the woman with the, um, that came and touched the hem of his garment and got healed? That was in the, um, Luke chapter 8, verse 40 through, 40 through 45. But then in the 14th chapter of Matthew, it says that many came and touched the hem of his garment, and they were healed. So they saw what she did. And then they came and got them song. But it gets better. It gets better. But when you get to Acts chapter 5 and verse 16, we see Peter come on the scene. They're not coming to touch the hem of Peter's garment. They're actually letting his shadow hit them. And they're getting healed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody say greater. It, it done got better, hadn't it? It done got better. Then we go over to the Acts, the 19th chapter, and Paul is out in Ephesus, and they said in two years, with 12 disciples, he reached all of Asia. All of Asia? Jesus just got Judea and Galilee. This boy reached all of Asia in two years with 12 people? Somebody say greater. But then it got a little bit better. Paul was working as a tent maker, and he had aprons and cloths that he wiped his face with and stuff. And they said they took those cloths and they took those aprons, sent them off to people, and the people got healed and delivered from demons. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, it says this. The first Adam, the one that failed, I'm going to get him when we get to heaven, by the way. The first one that failed, it said he was born a living soul. But the last Adam, the last one, Jesus, became a life-giving spirit. That's verse 45. I don't have time to do 46, 47, but I'm going to take you to 49. 49 says, just like we took on the nature of Adam, so now... We take on the nature of the last Adam. The last Adam was a life-giving spirit. We take on that nature. What did Peter, what did Paul, what does every believer, Smith Wigglesworth, any great person of God, all they had was the life of God that flowed out of them and touched whatever they came in contact with. Greater works is this. Let me show it to you. If I took every one of you that are a believer in this room right now, stripped away your experiences, stripped away your wrong thinking, your messed up thinking, your difficulties, your hardship, took your flesh away, took the emotions that get all out of whack, took all of that away, stripped you out, and left your spirits in here, I wouldn't be able to tell one of you apart because every one of you would be just like Jesus. How can we do greater works? Jesus was confined to Jerusalem. Now he's got you. He can go anywhere. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Why could he say, greater works will I do? Because he said, man, I'm looking in 2020, and I see my brother. And I got a place I want to go, but I can't get there, but you can. I see you, my sister. That's why God said, just yield. Say yes to me. All things are possible for us when we believe that God is who he said he is. Amen? Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, you see, see, but he can't do a thing greater unless he does it through you. 
He has limited himself to you. And you know what? He's excited about it. He isn't worried. Because on the, when the disciples, when Jesus died, the disciples all doubted and had unbelief. And he still said, go into all the world. Amen. Amen. Say, I am. I am. A good work. Waiting, Waiting to happen. All right, I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. Okay, where, where am I at? All right, go to the next one. I'll figure out where I'm at as we go. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is good. Give me one second here. I want to do something here. I didn't get to do this in the first service, but I want to do it here because I think it's important. I'm going to read these off. I just want you to listen to them. Sin, sickness, disease, affliction, poverty, a broken heart, and a crushed spirit. Any time in your life, as you're walking through your life, and you see any of those, it is an opportunity for good works. That's your signpost. There, there's, your, there's your glaring sign. I am being called into duty right now because I just saw one of these. That's the heart of God. God says, look, 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 look. Let me take time to do this. Oppression has some characteristics. The devil comes to oppress. Let me talk to you about them. He comes to rob, steal, kill, destroy, overwhelm, put hardship on you, have dominion, create dynamics where you don't feel good. His intent is to keep you from recognizing who you are and who God is in you. Hello? So if he can get you to not operate, he knows he stopped God because God limited himself to you. So look, look, look. When, when you sin, what does it bring? It doesn't hurt God. Who does it hurt? It hurts us because guilt and condemnation come with it. And, he, and he's the accuser of the brethren. And he tries to remind. Isn't it amazing? You can forget just about anything else. You can forget me and everybody else. But if you sin, it, it just pops. It just keeps popping right back up to you because he wants you to be condemned. Because when you're condemned, you have no confidence towards God. Watch this. Sickness. When do you least feel like doing something for God? When you're sick. And he'll use that against you. I came to tell you that God's desire is that you walk in. The, the Bible says, by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. I'm going to say something when I get to the end of this. Please don't be offended with me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because I don't have to preach next week, Pastor Jason does, so <laughs> I'll be all right. Now, disease. Sickness is usually temporary. You know you're going to get past it. It just keeps you down at that time. But disease is designed to put a long-term depression on you. So you say, God, how could you let this happen to me? If you really love me, how could you let this happen to me? And that's where he'll get you because you start doubting that you're loved by God. And God is saying, I gave you all my love from the beginning. Affliction. Now, affliction is when stuff just go wrong. That old raggedy car breaks down again. <laughs> and you <laughs> laying hands on that thing. Your washing machine break down. Yo, every time. And, and let me tell you what. It usually comes in threes, don't it? When one thing breaks, you're already looking for the next thing. You done got used to it now. <laughs> and God is saying, even when you're afflicted, it's still the enemy at the root of it. Can I, I'm going to say this statement. Whenever you see these things, though life happens and can cause damage, Satan will exploit any of these yeah. to keep you in depression. Yeah. So you can never go wrong by calling it the devil that's trying to create the havoc. 
Oh, my God. Oh, I, I ain't got time. Poverty. The Bible says this. A rich man's wealth is his strong city. This is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15. Rich man's wealth is his strong city. But the poverty of the poor is their destruction. The way you start thinking about yourself is that it can never be different. God is not big enough to bring me from where I am to get me to where I go. And guess what you start doing? You become poor, passing over opportunities repeatedly. And so you miss everything God wants you to see. And everything that he was trying to bring to you, you miss it because you are. God wants you to come up out of that. And he says, I'm going to give you the provisions of oppression removed. I'm going to give you every tool you need so you'll never be without. God is working for you and on your behalf. These two, I believe this is where we, we have missed it in the body of Christ. A broken heart. A broken heart. It's a place for good works to show up. Listen to this. Broken heart comes from failed relationships, loss, tragedy, death of a loved one. You were believing God for something, and it didn't happen. And your heart is broken. And you know what usually follows that? Yes, sadness, grief. But then depression comes. And you get used to being numb. You stop believing God can. You stop believing it'll be good again. He did you wrong. Yeah. He didn't respect who you were. Yeah. But that's not God. And if the devil can get you to back up from God, he says, I won. Listen, good works. We have to, as a believer, begin to see when God has us as the answer for the person with that broken heart. They sit right in our midst. We don't have a word for them. We don't have anything to help them with. Be born, be filled, be gone. Let that not be us. Let's help. Crushed spirit, betrayal, injustice, mistreatment, abuse. You did not deserve what was done to you, but neither did Jesus. Blame and anger has become your default. And God said, I'm here to tell you today, come out of it. The devil is using it to keep you from seeing the beauty of what you can bring in the world. God has created you to shine, and you're letting that become your darkening. Anytime we see any of these, people of God, step up. People of God, that's your beckoning call. That's your trumpet. It's your time. No one, absolutely no one in your sphere of influence should feel they have no hope with you around. <laughs> you change every environment you come into. You bring the life of God 
into a dark place. Oh, I came to serve you, notice. No victimization. No woe is me. No wallowing in my difficulty. God has been too good. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. You can't pack all of God in you and you be the same. Hallelujah. So what do we do about this? God has given us provisions for the removal of, pre- of oppression. Number one, oh, write these down. Take a picture of them. You need these. You're going to need them. As soon as you walk out that door, it's coming. You're going to have to respond. Number one, he's giving you his word. God said, I put my word above my name. Hallelujah. He said, by these exceeding great and promises, exceeding great and precious promises, this is uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. These exceeding great and precious promises, I will make you a partaker of my divine divine nature. Ooh. Church and neighbor say, neighbor, you sitting beside God. (laughs) Little G, little G, little G. Oh, if I had time to teach it, I'd show you that's what God said about you. Let, let me ask you something. God said, I created you in my image, right? If a dog has a, mates with a female dog, what do they create? A dog. A cat mates with a female cat, it creates a what? A lion, a fox, a god. Let us make man... In our, he, all right, all right, next, position, oh, oh, we got to get this one, got to get this one, I'm out of time, ain't I, am I, oh, Jesus, position, anyone that's in Christ is a new creation, old things are passed away, all things are become new. As soon as you become a son, you're no longer a servant. Get this, get this, get this. A servant has to ask for permission. A son can just do, can just have. You are a son of God, a believer. Once you are a believer, once you are born again, once you are in the kingdom, once you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son, Everything heaven has is at your disposal. Say everything. Everything. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go a little bit further. Everything heaven has is at your beck and command. Absolutely everything heaven has that's in alignment with the word is at your beck and command. The Bible says in Hebrews that the angels of God are ministering spirits sent to, do, to help those who are heirs of salvation. Watch this. It says the angels are waiting for your command. Power. <laughs> Go to power. Authority. Authority is this. Pre-permission. I'm a military guy. Once my commander gives me a I I spent 22 and a half years in the Air Force. Once my commander gives me a command, I perform that command until he comes and issues me a separate or new command. The authority of his first spoken word carries me that I can walk in that from now to the sun comes that back without it ever changing. And anyone that comes under the sound of my voice that I have authority to dom- have dominion or exercise my authority over must obey what it would say. So Jesus said, I gave you power and authority over all the power of the devil. Has he come back and changed it? No. Done. What did you say? It's done. It's done. Here we go. Proclamations. Proclamations are this. The word says, 
If you speak with your mouth and don't doubt in your heart, whatever you say will come to pass. Speak to the mountain. Let me, let me. Nowhere I challenge you to find it. Nowhere in the Bible do you see Jesus or any of the disciples ever praying for someone's healing. Not once. They always proclaimed or said what would be. Peter and John at the gate called view, silver and gold, have we none? Such we have, give unto you. Um, um, Peter, when he went down to Aeneas' house, he said, Aeneas, arise. He told Dorcas, rise from the dead. Proclaim, speak the word, and you get the results. Why are you going asking for God what he's already done? If God already healed you, how dare you go ask him to do it? You know what God is doing? He looked over, didn't we do that already? Proclaim what he said. Agree with his word. Then we get the results. Proclamation. Practice. I lay hands on the I told him in the first verse, I will lay hands on a light pole, on a mailbox, and command it to do what I say. Hello? Hey, I lay, if you're sick, come. I will lay hands on you and decree the word over you. I don't care whether you get saved. I do care whether you get healed or not. But it's not my responsibility. It's God's. But if I don't lay hands on you, what's your chances? Come on. We got to be, get to a point where we're willing to do what the word says. Even if it means I might look embarrassed. Because guess what? If that person gets healed, your embarrassment is going to go. It's going to go fast. And you get to be the one doing the good work. Amen. All right, practice, laying hands, persevere. Perseverance is simply this. After you've done the will of God, that you exercise faith and patience to see the promise comes to you. Hello. We have to stand after we have said we are doing the word. Don't just back up. As soon as you see something doesn't go like you think it should go, don't, 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 don't doubt God. Abraham didn't stagger at the promise of God, but was strong in faith and believed that God was able to do it. Now, these next ones, here's how we combat oppression. Truth, we have the truth that sets free. Stability, we have a sure foundation. Um, I want to quote this one for you. Write it down for your notes. It's Isaiah chapter, chapter 28, verse, 50, verse 16, actually. It says, God has given us a foundation. He's given for Zion a foundation, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, and they that believe shall not be in haste. BFF Christiana. This morning I came to tell you that God has already established a foundation in you. You don't have to doubt. You don't have to waver. He will stabilize you, and he will make where you are good. He, he will make right where you are good. That's his promise to us. Health, we lay hands on the sick and bring health. If you're sick in this room today, I have no doubt. And I told, I went through a spell of about for about three years. I had symptoms of ALS. I was told my kidneys were failing. My blood pressure was so high they couldn't believe I could walk. 213 over 150s. They were saying I might have all kinds of issues. I had a mini stroke. And for three years, I spent thirty to forty thousand dollars. Nutritionists, doctors, everywhere you could imagine, and none the better. I got on a plane to Africa, and every symptom that I had felt for all that time came upon me, and I've been going to Africa for 20 years. And I said, God, I believe you told me to take this trip. And if I died doing what you told me, I'd rather die believing you than I would rather die believing you than be in doubt and unbelief. 
I stepped off, stepped my foot off that plane in Africa and have never had a symptom since. I called my doctor and said, I have no longer, no longer have need of your services. Thank you very much. I'm not on any pills, any medication, and just two months ago, I took a life insurance physical and got a clean bill of health. So don't tell me what my God won't do. I'm not telling you theory. I'm telling you what God will do for you. Amen. I watched a lady just recently in Africa. She had been walking with a crutch, one of those ones that wrap around your arms. I took it from her and threw it away. I said, you won't need it anymore. Not one moment more did she limp from that point on. That's God. We just have put him in a box and don't allow him to work like he wants to work. And I'm here to tell you that health is ours. Wealth I don't have time, man. I, I could tell you for days, God wants you wealthy. It is him that gives you power to get wealth, to establish his covenant with you. But it's not for you. It's for the good works. And when you use them for that, he'll never let you lack and see. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Even his children rise up and are called blessed. My kids can't help but be blessed. Oh, they got me as they dad. Amen. Hello. Oh, I tell it to them too, and they know it. If they don't know it, I'll convince them. I'll cut them off if they don't. I'm finishing up. Look, look here. Wholeness. We are to be spirit, soul, and body whole for God. Peace. The Bible says this. Be anxious for nothing, but by everything. With prayer and thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And the peace of God will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. We fret. We're anxious. Anxiety in the heart of a man, anxiety in the heart of a man weighs him down. But a good word makes him glad. That's in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Anxiety in your heart is weighing you down. But I'm giving you a good word to make you glad. We're lifting today. Today is a day of lifting because you've got some good works you're supposed to be doing. Here we go. Peace and hope. Hope is our launching point for faith. Hope makes us not ashamed. Hope says God can, and it holds you until faith shows up and says God did. Hope you can't get rid of because it, it establishes you. But faith has to be hooked to a promise. If you don't have a promise, you don't have faith. I'm sorry, baby. But just saying I believe God can is not faith. I believe God's word says this. That's the faith God's looking for. That's what he has to operate from. So hope is necessary because it is what carries us. It is the, it is the cradle that holds us until we say, oh, there you go, God. Faith is believing God already did it. And I believe that. Amen. All right. So now I got something I want y'all to do with me. Whoo. Good works is our us assignment. But we have to Agree to the assignment. God couldn't make you accept him. And he won't make you do good works. We have to own them, become them, show them, exercise them. So I've got some professions that are based upon the word. And I want you to join with me in a clarion decree and cry. From this day forward, this will be a part of me, a part of my life, a part of who I am, a part of what God wants from me. And I want you to do like the military does. We stand at parade and we give commands and commands of execution. So I'm going to have you read these proclamations out loud 
with a little bit of reverence. See if I can get that. If you don't do it that way, I'm going to make you do it again. So you better do it the first time. All right. I want to put these up here, and they're going to be given to you. So uh, some of you have been taking your snapshots of these. These will be vital for you to have. But they're going to be also put on social media by somebody besides me <laughs> so that y'all can have these. But I want you to do them. Then I'm going to read the scripture to show you that they are a part of who you are. Amen. So here's our decree. So I'm going to get everybody to stand because we're getting ready to close out service too. But I want you to do these actually with some energy because, Father, I believe that your people have heard your word today. I believe that they recognize that you are doing something in their midst and, uh, and your desire is to do something in them, through them, around them, and for them. But these proclamations, God, help us to come into alignment and agreement with who you are and what you want to do through us. So the part in red you get to do, and then I will do the scriptures for you. Amen. Amen. On three. One, two, three, go. I was created for good works. For God, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Every day when you go through your life, there's a good work waiting for you. Question is, are you seeing it? Remember, your purpose, your, your provision, your potential are all wrapped up in that. Next. The word is whiskey for every good word. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. That the man, woman of God, young man, young woman, baby, all of them would be complete, equipped for every good work. Man, you, you ought to just shout on that. <laughs> every time you go to the Word, what is it doing? It's training and equipping you for the good works you're supposed to do. Yeah. Why should you read your Bible? Because it's what's training you. Yeah. It's getting you ready. Yeah. Next. Here we go. Ooh, ooh. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, God, himself, Jesus himself, and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort, good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them. Why would Pastor Jason take four, well, this is the third one. I think he's got at least one more, four weeks to teach this. I told the first service this, and no, it was you I told this. Whenever God brings a word like this, he's ready to carry a people to a whole nother place. Get ready. Next. In the same way, let Stop, 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 stop. In the same way, let Stop, stop, y'all stop. I know y'all reading the scripture, but I'm trying to get you to go a whole nother way. In the same way, so that they Stop, 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 stop. Y'all messed it up again. <laughs> They're not going to see God's good works. They're going to see. And because I have been taught on this and understand it, I'm not going to use it wrong. I'm going to use these good works for glorifying God, not to draw attention to myself. Okay, now we can do it again the right way. Okay. My good works bring glory to God in the same way. Let your light, your light, your light so shine before people that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father. Next. I must intentionally devote myself to good works. 
The saying is trustworthy. And I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed. How many of y'all believe? How many of y'all believe? This is for you. Those who have believed in God may be careful. Are y'all hearing it? I got one more for you. I think that's the last one they have. But I got one. uh, Yeah, I do have one more. Repeat this after me. If you dare. dare. (laughs) No, I dare. (laughs) 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 That was me. BFF, this is for us. As the people of God, We are to use use our position, our our power, power, and our provision provision to be good, to good, to do good, good, to bring good, good, to create good good in the earth, earth, which brings glory to God. God. Father, I thank you for this people this morning. Father, we receive. Father, past my antics, past my joking, past any example that could have attended, it is your desire that your people know and are sure that it is them that you want to do your good works through. Father, we have to operate with no partiality. We have to be a people, God, that allow you freedom through us. The life you have put in us, God, is not just to give us an opportunity to make it to heaven, but to shine you on the earth. Father, help us to see you as you truly are. And help us to see us as your desire and plan has for us to be. We are the ones that are going into our jobs. We are the ones in media. We are the ones on the sports team. We are the ones, oh God, that are in the schools. And you won't get there. The only Jesus they will see is the Jesus they see in us. Father, we take your assignment today we come and when we see those seven oppressions of the devil we hear and say yes it is my time yes i will be the answer i will deal with the sin i'll deal with the sickness i'll deal with the disease i'll deal with the affliction the poverty the broken heart and the crushed spirit you said many are the afflictions of the righteous but you deliver them out of them all because you are near to the brokenhearted and you save the crushed in spirit. Father, wherever we find ourselves today, today you have spoken to us that you want to transform everything about us. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. Thank you for watching our service today. We appreciate you visiting with us. We appreciate you sharing the word of God. And more importantly, we appreciate the work that God is going to do in your life as a result of your time with us. Again, if you're a first time visitor, go ahead and take a moment to connect with us. If it's your week to give, please, there are many options and ways that you can give online. If you'd like to just sow into our community and sow into what our church is doing, you can use one of these options. We have a vibrant ministry to the community and every dollar that you sow into this church will be used to better the people and the communities that we serve. Until next week, be blessed.